What'd you say to an early night? Makes a change for us to have a place to ourselves, eh? Go, fly. Yeah, I don't want any funny remarks from you, thank you very much. I don't know, here we all are. You, me, Shell, the little ones, all the fowlers. And... She's a Holloway. Yeah, well, she'll be a fowler again when her divorce comes through. And to cap it all, we've just been handed more money than I've ever seen in my life for the upkeep of our granddaughter. And what's my beloved wife doing? Sitting there with a face like doom, reading the Bible. I'll make some tea. <laughs> I was only doing what Mum used to do when there was a problem. And what's the problem? The money. That's not a problem. That's the solution. Oh, no. I've been thinking it over. It's not right. The money left to go back. He did leave it for Sharon. Then what seduced my daughter? He's Arthur. I mean, Shannon quite a bit to do with it and all, you know. He took advantage. She was a child. Anyway, we've got to think of Vicky's future. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Look, if I'd have known about it, and all right, I'm not going through all that again, but if I had it done, I'd have made her take him to court then. He'd have had to fork out there and then for Vicky's upbringing. And it would have been a lot more than what we got. I want to see Michelle settled, I want to see Vicky provided for, and I want to see a smile on your face. The clouds are lifting, Pauline. It's our time at last. Time for each other. So why are you sitting here reading Mum's old Bible? Doc Cotton been on at you. I was trying to tell you before, when there was a problem, Mum always used to get the Bible, right, close her eyes, and then open it like that and stick a pin in. And she swore that wherever the pin went was the answer to the problem. So what does it say? Terah begat Abraham and Nehar and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. Oh, there you are, then. All oh, that begetting. That only proves the money is Vicky's. Mm. The children shall inherit the earth, right? Who cares? It's always like that round here. Now, are you coming to bed, or are we going to have a cup of tea? Well, be careful with her. She ain't there, is she? It's just the remains. That's what I've got to keep telling myself. Oh, Dr. Lake, where's the dignity? I mean, you've got to have some dignity. I never thought they'd get cover in a plastic bag. Oh, I can't forget how terrible she looked. Come on, Doc. Come on. Oh, I'm all right. They'll tidy her up, won't they, when they get her down the mortuary? I mean, they won't let her mother see her like that. You come inside and I'll give you a sedative. No, I don't want no pills. No, I want to stay away. That makes sense. You think I'm just a silly old woman, don't you? No, I've got more respect than that, Doc. Yeah, well, then don't you give me no drugs. And I think they turned a lively young girl like Donna into a piece of meat in a plastic bag. I'm going to go straight upstairs. I'm going to throw all my pills in my bathroom cabinet down the lab. Somehow I've got to make some sense out of this. Sorry to bother you when you're working. I know this sounds a bit feeble, but you know you said to me if there was anything I wanted you to do, I only had to ask. Well, when it's convenient, I'd um, be really grateful if you'd go through my dad's things with me. Just staring at this case all blasted evening, I feel such a fool. You will? Oh, thanks. surgery tomorrow to do the necessary and we can interview Mrs. Cotton tomorrow. No point upsetting her further, it's all perfectly routine. They'll know more when they've done the post-mortem. Well, it's a nasty way to go though, isn't it? Choking on your own vomit. They should show that on the anti-drugs posters. Put the nation off its collective breakfast. I would. just can't believe how common this is becoming. Yeah, three times this month. It's becoming everyday routine. Still, you know all about that, don't you, Dr. Lake? 
Right, I'll see you tomorrow then. Good night. Good night. Hey, if only I'd seen her yesterday, you see it, my It's the worst of it that gets me. A young girl to throw away a life like that, just like that. When there's patients like Margot Barnes, who's enduring chemotherapy, fighting cancer every step of the way. Well, I don't see what that's got to do with it. Well, what's the matter with you? Well, I just hope you're satisfied with yourself. This is what you're telling the poor themselves to get a policy has led to. What? what? This is totally uncalled for, Well, baby. I'm sorry, but that is what I feel. You feel a damn sight too much, boy. It's time you started to think. Yeah, we'll talk tomorrow when I'm calm down. That's what calls to David? Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm. I've got to do something about the profit margin. I'm completely wiped out for what, I... Oh, they say seafood's very good for perking you up, if you know what I mean. Mussels and that. Mind you, I haven't touched them since I had some dodgy ones at South End and threw up for two days. Yeah, I'm going to go for my costings and my menus. I'm going to have to find somewhere to cut down. Ian, this is me, Cindy, you intended. I need a bit of attention, all right? Otherwise, your overheads aren't the only things that are going to find themselves cut down. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It's me, Doc. Dr. Leck. Ah. Hello, Doc. You're still up, was he? I just came to check that you're all right. I'm in the presence of my saviour, Dr. Leck. He won't let me down. You see, I've got to make some sense out of this. You know what, love? We're going to make it. It's going to be the eye life for us while the likes of Wixie are still mopping up bar counters. All right, all right, I get the message. Now, do you think we could talk about something a bit more interesting? Like the colour of my eyes? I bought this new perfume. It's supposed to send them world. I'm thinking of sending it back, actually. Who's that? Yeah, it's a bit late, though, isn't it? Hi, Mum. Hi. I just have to come round. Oh, what's up? I'm sorry if I'm broken. I didn't mean to. Okay, what's happened? Yeah. You mean you haven't heard? What? It's Donna. She's dead. She's taken an overdose. She's dead. <clears throat> Thanks, Mo. It's good of you to lend a hand. What a night, eh? Well, I could flatten that son of mine if he wasn't flattened already. Thank you trying to get out of bed. Set him back another week at least. You can't blame him. When he heard the sirens, he was bound to know what was going on. Yeah, he probably thought it was him they was coming for. If I was told half of them old bangers, I wouldn't know. What's your lip, you? Oh, is that all the thanks I'll get? And then he put my own back out trying to lift him, you know? I'm done in. Thank God I don't have my own room back tonight. Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that, Simon. You can for the time being, but I'm going to put an advert in for B&B in the window tomorrow. If I get a take -her, well, you'll have to move out. Mum, I don't mind moving out for Kathy's sake, but this is taking a biscuit, innit? It's my room, I work here, I'm entitled to it, ain't I? Nobody's entitled to nothing. There's a spare bed in Ricky's room. You get your meals for nothing. Most bar staff live out these days. Anyway, it's a business I'm running here, and the few extra coppers I get from B&B will come in very handy. Don't no one think about nothing but money around here. Can't do much without it. Don't I just die tonight? Yeah, I'm sorry, Simon, I've made my mind up. Good night. I ain't been so hard on him, Mo, but he's got to find a purpose in life. Kids who don't have that, well, look what can happen to them. Tonight's really shook me up, eh? So Simon wouldn't take drugs, he ain't the type. What is the type? I met Donna's parents once. Nice, respectable couple, seemed very concerned about her. Didn't seem sure of a bob or two. It surprised me. From what I saw her, I thought she was a right little tramp. But you have got a point there. You've got our Ricky and Diane to think about. Yeah, we've got to do something about Ricky, that's for sure. 
I ain't a bad kid. But they're all a bit wild at that age. His father certainly was. And don't try and tell me you was little Miss Spotless Drawers, cos I'd fall about laughing. I can remember exactly what I was like. That's what worries me. Now, I've got to find a way of making Ricky do his own work and come in at a reasonable hour. Oh? Well, Diane's more manageable. It's probably because she ain't met some bloke she's gone loony over yet. I'll worry about her later. There's three ways. Mm. There's example, there's bribery, and there's giving him a good idea. Well, you and Frank would certainly fail on the first one. Thanks. And giving him a good idea is no good when they're big enough to itch her back. So that only leaves bribery. Or oh, I'll be over early in the morning. I've got a bit of tongue in soak. I think it should be ready by now. Oh, thanks, Mo. Oh, Doc. I saw your light was on, so I wondered if I might have use of your phone, cos I don't like to go to the call box, you know, not with all them muggers about. Yeah, of course, Doc. Uh, listen, why don't you use the private phone? Are you all right, love? We was wondering whether we should come over, but we thought maybe the doctors would have given you something. Oh, it was full control. Thank you. Look, I'll tell you what, Doc, I'll make you a cup of tea, eh? It's no trouble. No. No, no tea, thank you. I won't take up much of your time. I'll leave the money on the table, cos it's a long-distance call. No, Doc, we wouldn't dream of it. It's all right. Rose? Stop. Doc Codner, cos, who do you think? I want to speak to Charlie. Look, just you get him to the phone. It's a matter of life and death. Charlie? Yes, I do know what time it is. Well, there's no need to shout. Look, I wouldn't ring you if it weren't urgent. I've just had a terrible shock, and it's made me realise... Look, just shut up and listen, Charlie. We've got to get together and do something about our Nick before it's too late. No, I ain't gone by. I mean, Charlie! Look, Donna meant nothing to you. You could have done nothing to keep her at your age. She was lucky, Kat. She got adopted by decent, caring people. I mean, you met them, you saw them. She had her chances, but she wanted to come here to make trouble. She had bad blood in her. I don't believe in bad blood. How could I with some of it's mine? Kat, now stop it. You ain't doing yourself any good. I haven't said a kind word to him, Mum, so if I had... Look, Donna I'm... died of drugs. In spite of everybody around here doing what they could do to help her. I didn't her. do nothing to help her. Why should you? With all the trouble she's caused. You've got enough of your plate with that trial coming up and all. I got the letter today with a date and... It hardly seems to matter anymore. You sure you don't want me to walk over with you, Mo? Yeah, I've got Rowley and me whistle. Or I'll go and visit that poor woman tomorrow, take her a bit of stew and pay him respects for Ockley. What for? I know she's had a shop, but it's not as if Donna was a relative. When there's been a death in the house, you always visit the bereaved. It's a tradition. Well, that's the way I was brought up. I don't know about you. Come on, Rowley. I just had to come and see you. If you're driving me on your own, I'll oh, go. No, please sit down. I'd be glad of the company. Shows respect. I mean, I could hardly go to the mortuary, you know, it would have been an intrusion. So I decided to stay up all night. I lit some candles for her because I thought it seemed the right thing to do. I was reading about Elisha giving the Schumannite son the kiss alive. It's funny, that. It's just where I opened it. Sorry? On Mount Carmel. That lot of you she was, all she did was call the doctors. I could have done that myself. Now, if she'd come round here like she promised. And he went and he stretched himself upon the child. And he put his mouth on his mouth. And he put his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. I would have done that, Cass, but it was too late. She'd been gone too long when I found her. Was it very bad, Doc? Oh, yes. That's why I've got to find some meaning. I mean, why should a young girl like that take stuff that's going to kill her? I might have tried to look after her, Cass. Maybe I've done wrong. Like I'd done with my own boy. I didn't mean to spoil him, either. You were really good to her, Dot. 
You're the only one out of all of us who was. Yeah, but it didn't seem to be kindness that was needed, does it? I mean, if I hadn't taken her in, she might have had to do something for herself. I mean, you've got to go to the bottom of the pit before you can start to climb up, ain't you? I mean, all I did was help her get the money to buy that filthy stuff. I mean, she had to gone home to her parents. How can you think it was your fault? Well, we're all responsible for each other, Kath. I mean, I know people think I'm a nosy old busybody, but I've always been aware of If anyone of that. should have helped on her, it was me. And I turned her away. She was my daughter, Doc. I gave birth to her. I was only a kid myself at the time. And I'd her adopted. There were other reasons and all. Every time I looked at her, it reminded me of, of what happened all those years ago. I thought I was doing the right thing, put my own family first. It seemed so much clearer then. Now look at me. I'm alone, and I? I ain't got a family anymore. And Donna's dead. I see. All falls into place. So I see you one day in the wine bar with the lad close, and I thought to myself, I thought, that's funny. And then tonight she said, well, I don't see that change as anything, Kath. I mean, she was what she was. I mean, you'd have had to be a saint. Take her into your home. I did try, Doc. But I'd always feel myself going all cold inside. I couldn't help it. I'd have been kinder to a stranger than I was to her. Yeah, well, you're no more at fault than the rest of us. In my opinion, it was Rod what left, you know, that was the last straw. You know, going off with them girls just when she was starting to trust him. But, I mean, that's men all over, ain't it? Still, it's the mum and dad that brought her up we got to think about. Oh, I dread to think of what they're going through. I think it's terrible what's happened to the young people around here. All kinds of evil preying on them. Drug pushes and pimps. No structure to their lives, no guidance from their parents. And such a young girl. It's tragic, tragic. Yes, yes. Look, I am sorry. I'm in a rush. It's clinic today. It's 278, please. Thank you. I worry about Sahel. Shireen, we keep a constant check on. But how can I tell if he's experimenting with drugs? I shouldn't think that's very likely, but there are signs that you can check for. I've got some leaflets at the surgery. I can drop them around for you later. Thanks a lot. No, you got... can't. You've had enough to last you a week. What are you so snappy for? You and him been arguing again? You must be equally worried about young Junior. You never know what they'll get up to when they're not supervised. But then you work long hours, don't you? Mm. I'm not going to his shop again. He moans all the time. No, he doesn't. Now, will you be quiet? Goodbye. Thanks. I'm really tired of you stirring it. Well, he talks to me like he understands about my dad. And we're down. I don't want to be his friend. Look. If I get you a key cup, will you do as I ask, just for today? And then you can come home straight after school. You try to be nice to Matthew. He's an only child. He doesn't know how to look after kids. It's a deal. Right, let's go. Aisha! What that boy needs is a good smacking. You'd think with her experience she'd be aware of that. I do hope we've made the right decision about moving around here. It seemed like such a good idea at the time. Well, if we can make more links with the community, we can be more responsible for each other's children. I think we should throw an open evening for our customers, serve some refreshment, perhaps. But the shop isn't big enough. Well, we can put the community centre, then. That seems to be what it's for. I'll speak to Mrs Butcher. She seems to have taken charge of it. But what about all the cooking? And I'm all sure you'll of... cope. And wear your best sari. If you're going to do it, might as well do it properly. We'll show the English we know how to give a party with the best of them. To think we heard the sirens. We just slept right through it. We never give it another thought. I don't suppose there's much we could have done if we had. Well, there might have been. Poor Dot. I better go over and see her straight away. Don't know what I'm going to say to her, though, especially after all those nasty things I said about that girl. You meant it for the best, love. Well, she's out at the police station now, but she's all right, though. She's taking it a lot better than you might think. Look, why don't you have a cup of tea, Kath? You could look completely done in yourself. No, thanks. I thought I should just come round and tell you anyway. I'm sorry it's been so difficult since me and Pete split, but me have always been straight with me. We've tried not to take sides. I know I don't need to ask you this, but... I'd be grateful if you didn't ever tell us all about me and Donna. Oh, no, of course. Do you think not. we are? 
Anyway, I'll tell you one thing. If Dot's got it out of it, it'll be all round the square, whether you like it or not. Well, she says she'd already guessed, but she swears she won't say anything. Yeah, well, it won't come from us. I've got enough problems of my own to worry about without gossiping about you. Now, come on, Martin. I've got to get him off to nursery school. I expect I'll see you around later. Arthur, let's stew in the pot for your tea, all right? Oh, thanks, Arthur. Yeah. Ta-da, then. Ta-da, darling. I kept meaning to come around and see you a bit more often, but you know how it is. Oh, come on. Come and sit down, Kath. You look as white as sheep. I didn't sleep a wink last night. Oh, dear. Well, how's the new flat going? Is it all right? Yeah. If you've got any little jobs you want doing and you don't want to ask Pete, you can always come to me, you know. We've never had any quarrel, Kath, not me and you. And no matter what happens between you and Pete, you can always count on me as a friend. Thanks, Arthur. You're a good bloke, you know. <laughs> you and Pauline would never have done what I did. I mean, Pauline would never have given a baby away. I mean, look how she insisted on having Martin, no matter what Mum said or how poor you were. Now, that's completely different and you know it. Now, come on, Kath, no point in talking like that. It doesn't do any good. She died because she took drugs, and it seems to me a lot of kids from all sorts of backgrounds are doing that these days, and you can't tell me that they all come from broken homes, and you can't hold me and Pauline up as an example either. Look at Mark. I tell you, the only thing that gets me through sometimes is thinking of Martin and young Vicky. And I don't care how I do it, but I'm going to see that they profit by our mistakes. The same things ain't going to happen to them. It's no good, Si. I can't face it, especially after what's just happened. Well, that's all right. When you're ready, just ask me. I can't take much more of it in. I really thought she was clean of drugs. I mean, if we'd have known, Si, we could have done something. Oh, come off it, Sharon. You didn't like her any more than I did. Didn't stop you sleeping with her, though, did that it? That was a long time ago. She wasn't nearly as mad then. Anyway, you know how she used to go around throwing herself at blokes. And you were never one to refuse a free offer. So what gets me about blokes, you don't care who it is as long as they let you. Every time anything goes wrong around here, the women start taking it out on me. Oh, I'm sorry, Si. Dad I'm angry about, I suppose. What happened to Donna was what was always going to happen to Donna. You ever done smack? What do you think? I nearly passed out and had a flu injection. I got offered some to smoke once by this bloke at work. What a creep. He couldn't have got it together to do anything about it if I'd fancied him. I thought even then, if it turns you into a wimp like that, I don't want to know. Here. What time are you due on shift? Free till closing. Great. You can come up west with me. I've seen a jacket I really like. One thing I did learn from me, Mum, was when in doubt, paint your face and spend money. And if you're a really good boy, I'll buy you an ice cream in Max's. It's ever so nice of you to come round. Mrs Butcher brought me that lovely stew. Hope I don't get into trouble, Mr Apatopoulos. I went in, but then I had to go to the police. Dot, and I don't think I got the strength to go back. Just don't worry about that. I'll sort him out. I just wish you'd go to bed and lie down. You look terrible. Well, I would, but the police said that Donna's father wanted to come and see me, and I don't like to let him down. Well, what's it to you? Some sort of parents they must have been letting her run wild like that. If you ask me, you could do without any more upsets. Oh, don't say that. I mean, she's over age, and they must have tried their best. Anyway, it's me duty. I told him straight what a little cow thought she was. I mean, what's the point of pretending you feel something when you don't? I don't see what all the fuss is about, do you? Well, it's always a shock when someone you know dies, especially like that. Yeah, but she could always get round him. He swears they never did anything, but I don't know. There was something going on. I can't put my finger on it, but she could always get round him. I reckon I did. It's all in the past now, Cindy. It hardly matters anymore. Yeah, well, don't you worry. I'll get it out of him. If we're going to be mad, we're having no secrets. We had a row the other day because he wouldn't tell me how much money he had in the building society. I mean, if there's one thing that's going to ruin any relationship, is having stupid secrets. I just remember something I've got to do. I don't know what's wrong with everyone today. I mean, we can't bring it back, can we? Well, I was hard, but next to you, I'm just practicing. Hey, what have you been saying to Kathy? I ain't said nothing. Uh, well, perhaps your feelings are good. Seems like it a bit hard you going on about Donna like that. Well, why should it upset Kathy more than anyone else? He is just as bad moaning on. I mean, it's not as if she was a relative or something, is it? Oh, Mrs. Beale. I was looking for you. They, they said you'd closed your store. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Perhaps there was somewhere we could talk. My wife's under sedation at the moment, I'm afraid, and I wanted to thank Mrs. Cotton. From what I hear, she's been very good to my daughter these days. Kathy! 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 Kathy, it's all right! It's all right, Kathy! <laughs> <laughs> Your behaviour in the surgery this morning was inexcusable. It was perfectly obvious to the patient that there was a quarrel between us. Look, 
Whatever the rights and wrongs of this case, I shall expect an apology, or I shall have to re-examine the terms of our partnership. Go on, then. You go in there and sit down. There's a good girl. Here, yeah, Kat. Oh, yeah. Are you sure you won't come back and have a cup of tea? Because I only live just over there. No, I had better be getting back to my wife. I didn't mean to upset Mrs. Beale like that. I only wanted to thank you all for the kindness you've shown Donna. It wouldn't be no trouble. No, no, if I come in and sit down, I'll never get up again. The police told me Donna had been living with you for quite some time. I haven't got nothing to thank me for. I didn't know she was back on drugs, I swear it. Should have found your address and written to you, but I thought she was getting better and... I loved having her with me, you know, looking after her. Didn't want to lose her. I thought I could do it all by myself. Now we're all lost her. She was a grown woman, Mrs. Cotton. She made her own decisions. Yes, but I mean, if you'd known she was on drugs... We knew. You did? We had it out with her, but there was nothing we could do. You gave her a home, Mrs. Cotton. My wife and I will never be able to thank you enough for that. Yeah, but there must have been something we could have done. We could have gone to the police. My wife wanted to. I refused to allow it. That's the cross I have to bear. Even though she'd stolen my checkbook and forged enough checks to buy a great deal of the stuff, I just didn't feel we could do that to our own child. We went to uh, organizations, Families Anonymous, a group that counsels the parents of addicts. And they all said the same thing. As long as we were giving her money and turning a blind eye when she stole, taking her in, we were supporting her habit. We had to let her go. No, 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 you've nothing to reproach yourself for. The fault was mine. My wife was always more perceptive about Donna, much as she loved her. I indulged and forgave her and refused to see what was staring me in the face. No matter how hard we tried, we could never give her enough love. I don't think anyone ever could. Now we shall never know the reason why. <laughs>